Thanks for staying with us. Over the weekend, we saw <coughs> videos about Nigerians being mistreated and maltreated at an airport in Togo on route um, Ethiopian Airlines. And um, the video obviously went viral, and um, many people have expressed their concerns about how Nigerians are treated abroad. Uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs have sent out a press release saying that they're on top of the investigation has started. Uh, we also said in the papers today that the Nigerians affected have been brought home already. Uh, and then we'll, we're waiting to hear reports from official reports on exactly what happened mm. and if persecution will take place afterwards. However, the real crux of the conversation is why do we have to always get Nigeria? Why are Nigerians being treated this way internationally? What is the root cause of this? What can we do uh, diplomatically to forestall these sorts of treatments against Nigerians going forward. That's our conversation today. You can call us on 081-270-53687, 091-390-7694. You can also send us messages on YouTube, and Facebook will be happy to read your messages. All right, let me let Nima start, because I know that you really expressed displeasure mm -hmm. over this video, and, I, and I'd like to let you start the conversation. Go ahead, please. So a lot of times Nigerians are treated like this. We have the Tunus case in question in African countries. So these were two travelers who had stopped at uh, Lume to get a flight to get them to Lagos. They were coming from the U.S. And that flight was announced full. So what is the right thing to do? If people had already booked, did the flights not have a schedule of the number of people they were going to carry? Mm. Were these people just told that they were going to fly without, without booking, making any arrangements? Of course, they made arrangements and they had relied on that representation that there will be a flight available, this, a seat, and probably made commitments at home that I'll be in Lagos, this number of hours, within this number of, you know, to maybe to meet an event, hoping that, you know, things will just go smoothly. A business and so, meeting. Yes, and when you disappoint people like that, you are supposed to be sorry and treat them better. Yeah. Mm. You're supposed to create comfort for them. But we saw our own people, our own brothers, being rubbish on the floor, about six people on one person, uh -huh. holding and stretching their legs. I thought they were carrying drugs, though. Honestly. You know? And the way they were stretching them, I was like, ah, even if this person will add firearms, is it? Yeah. Uh, look at the way they were treating yeah. them. Yeah. So you know, I know, I know that there was a report I was reading. I think in, in, in the reports I read concerning how Heathrow Airport was able to revamp the operations. What they did was called all the stakeholders. The airlines were called together alongside people within Heathrow Airport to say, "What can we do to have that synergy?" So when there's a flight delay. The airport is aware there's a mm, delay mm. and knows how to manage customers' expectations. Okay, mm. this is what happened. The airlines will maybe sort you out concerning mm. re re refunding or rebooking, but as the airport itself, they also have responsibilities to the customer. So mm. there's that synergy. But if we see in, in this case, it was, it was wrong. Was so what it, was, it, was, it was missing. If, but regardless sorry. of that, uh, the issue is the, 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 the treatment. Yes. No, what is the standard? The standard is that you create comfort for them. So if flight was changed, we've made another That's the airline, not the airport. No, there are two different things. The yes. airline yes. and airport officials should work together. Yeah. That's so they probably put them in a lounge, calm them down, and you know, explain the delays that they have to them. And if they want to protest, <clears throat> she not protest. They do not slap anybody. But what we saw in this video is like you're trying to arrest somebody, trying to escape arrest. Mm. They did not put them in any lounge, obviously. They did not calm them down, obviously, and what they have done to them is more than actionable. Right. If I were there, okay. I would sue them. Let me to get your thoughts on it. Yes, so the only thing I see here is discrimination. We discriminate exactly. against ourselves. If it was a white man whose flight was delayed, mm -hmm. trust me, those Lume officials will not treat that person anyhow. Mm -hmm. They will find a way to appease you. They will tell you, we are sorry, uh, it's been delayed a bit. We are working towards it. You will see them. They are trained. They know what they are supposed to do. But once it comes to a black man and it comes to a Nigerian, there's a way these other African countries look at us. And I will blame it largely on our own governments. Over the years, we've seen how our government has acted like it did not care, especially towards citizens outside the country. We're still struggling to get the care we that we're inside this place. But especially for those ones outside, we, we've noticed that lackadaisal attitude except is a VIP and you see the government moving if these African nations know that if you mess with a Nigerian we come for you they will sit up it's it's as simple as making sure that your customer service is being given to everybody everybody gets your utmost excellence of service everybody's giving whether you're a white you're a black you're an Indian you're a Chinese whoever you are if you come into our airport and anything happens we will take care of you and you are you make it very 
transparent. But what I see is because they have this notion against Nigerians. When it comes to things like they just assume everybody coming from Nigeria All is right. either a thief <laughs> or a drug peddler and they treat us anyhow. Well, let me, we let me, will not take it again. No. Let me come to, let me come to talk about it because you are addressed how you, how you put yourself out there. And, and it seems as though we also don't treat each other the right way. I mean, they see how even our security operators within our countries treat us. So how do you expect somebody to respect you outside? Even, even within your own shores, you don't respect yourself. So um, while I agree that if there is any shred of discrim discrimination from, it looked very discriminatory. It looked like there was abuse of power and there was um, suppression of someone's ability to easily express themselves. Uh, I don't want to say that this is being done because we're black, because there are videos that I've seen in the Onimbo airports, in the abroad, in the, Amer in the US of A, where people were forcibly, force, um, forcefully being removed from the aircraft or um, people who, who misbehaved That's were being different. treated the way anybody that misbehaves is being treated. So I feel that um, we are being accused, we're accusing them based on what we've seen other countries do to Africans, to us. Let us give that mm -hmm. investigation time to find out specifically what they did. Because I'm trying to did. understand if I'm at the airport, if I'm at the airport and I am politely asking, oh, can you please find out, can, can you help me understand what's going on? What are you doing to resolve my case? Nobody will come and drag me out of the place. So there must have been a level of aggression from the part of those that are being dragged as well, if we check very well. But is it possible? Because I don't believe that somebody will just come. <laughs> somebody, as I'm standing, like I just stand and I'm asking questions politely, and then so the police wait. will come and drag but me. But let, 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 mm. me, let me play the devil's advocate here a bit, because the truth is that if your flight was being delayed in Dubai, mm. in France, in UK, would you protest? Would you, and your, would you as Africans, because you know what, we're in France right now, mm. and our flights have been delayed, would you gather yourself and say, we're going to protest this? Because usually... If we were, because it's an Af out, there's, a, there's, a, there's an angle that because we're in an African airport, we can protest. Now, now we, we will protest. But if you are in a European airport or in Dubai, there's a decorum that you, are, you automatically assume because you're in this European airport and you just keep, you, you keep asking so politely. The so there's always that no, issue. No, I, had the same a experience. I had the same experience with, a, with, an, with an airline in the US. The flight was delayed for two hours, then later delayed for like four hours yeah. mm. in America. And I was wondering, seriously, they already told me that this flight is spirits, the spirits can behave anyhow. <laughs> so I just sat there and yeah. I waited and, I, and everybody was, they, were, they kept announcing this is what happened. Because of COVID, they don't have enough mm. um, attendance and the lady that's supposed to come could not make it down, she's not feeling fine, one thing, one thing. So they, after announcing, by the time they extended it to four hours, they gave us a, a meal voucher. Uh -huh. Everybody got a meal voucher. But I was looking at the time that like, I can't be here for another four hours. So I went and I asked, is there any other flight I can take? They said, no. I said, can I ask for a refund? I got it. I filled the form. They did a refund. So airline I used my money. Airport. Airline. Yes. So I used my money to book another airline. So I'm saying that if the company, they should investigate thoroughly to find yes. out. There are multiple people that will be probably wrong. Maybe the Nigerian citizens overreacted. Maybe they overreacted, overreacted. because of the way they were treated when they went to make inquiries regarding how and when their flight yeah. being delayed would yeah. go on. And it wasn't yeah. even being delayed. They were overbooked. Mm. So the plane they was did not going know. to go. They, they did not know. Wait, wait, wait. They were overbooked. So there was mismanagement on the part of the okay. airline. So you're saying there are different factors. Yeah, then come to back to this. Okay, yeah. so what I see is communication is always a problem with African uh, businesses. Right. So something is about to go wrong. Nobody will tell you anything. You just sit in the airport. They will cancel your flights. Nobody will tell you anything. Nobody will give you an excuse. Nobody will tell you why what is waiting. happening is happening. You'll just be waiting. It's frustrating. So I have spent money. I'm coming all the way from America. I have meetings I need to... And you're not even making me feel like we're sorry. We're overbooked. These are the measures we're putting in place in no time. Okay, why don't you chill here? Sit here. Eat this. Let us fix this. You're not giving that to people. Mm. And you say I should not shout about my money. I will shout. I will scream if I need to. And even if I am Amer in America or in Dubai and this happens and nobody's making me feel like just relax. We're, we're, we're doing everything we can to see how we can put you on the next available. Mm. I can react. Mm. As long as I'm not a criminal, I don't have any drugs in my pocket, I can react. Okay. I have paid my I, money and I should no, be treated no, fairly. Let me, so it's about let me go on the break. When, okay. it, when we right. come back, we'll continue with Nima. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still discussing the treatment of Nigerians abroad. I think I have Bola and I come to Nima. Good morning, Bola. Are you online? Hello, good morning. Good morning, you're live. Go ahead, please. Exactly, yeah. I'm calling from Abuja. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Go ahead. 
Thank you. I'm a first time caller. Welcome to the show. Yeah, what happened in the Lume that you said? We need to <coughs> we need to be aware of something. Uh, Togo and Benin Republic. Togo and Benin Republic. They yeah. don't allow protest from anybody. It's only in Nigeria that people are allowed to protest. Like when we had Elsa the other time in Nigeria, people were marvelled over there. They were surprised. <coughs> How could people face uh, a policeman in the name of protest? So in the Republic, in the Republic, it is not allowed to protest. They mm -hmm. are obedient to the government. You know, these are smaller countries, and they are not developed uh, democracy-wide. Mm -hmm. So they are saying like this, okay, you, you don't protest in those, in those countries. They see it as a rebellion to the government. Oh. So even in the case of uh, the other man, he told there. They were warned. Look, Nigerians will not protest. Hmm. They, don't allow, they don't allow you over there. Wow, interesting. There's only Nigeria that will wow. protest. So over right. there, you keep calm and you expect government to intervene. So I think that is what must have what happened, happened. Mm. Right. for them. Thank you, but as I said, the, the, the government is still investigating and we're going to get the official report exactly what happened and transpired. Yes, Nima, your thoughts? So I don't understand overbooking of any airline. It's not more now. There's no standing <laughs> inside. Yeah. You know, so it's either the number of seats available are clear and they are communicated by airport. Even if the plane is stopping every airport in every country, they already know the number of seats, the available seats, that can be determined. And so these people will not have you know, been hopeful that they are getting home in a few hours when their plane lands, you know, say they are overbooked. Mm -hmm. Also, I know the standards are brought because I've handled this for, um, for a makeup artist before she, when she lost her luggage with Ethiopian Airlines. Yeah. And we had to sue them. <clears throat> If you have a delayed flight, under my research at that time, I think it was 600 um, pounds compensation for some countries mm. to 25 dollars for depending on the number of hours so they didn't calculation. Need to so no, if they don't have the information, call. Mm. And then if they, as Bisi said, the communication of what had happened might have been poor. Yeah. These people might have it's been possible. provoked to say, ah, why you be just, why we just been ignored? We have plans, we have, and we also already paid for services right. mm -hmm. that you have failed to render. You know, so, I don't so let me address culture. You know, thank God for the perspective, a different perspective the caller brought now. That in this country, the culture is no protest. Mm. Where those protesters are coming from in their country, if you don't protest, you don't you get don't anything. You don't get anything, yeah. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria, if you don't protest, your salary will not get paid. If you don't protest, you will not get basic access to the, uh, what is your mm. human right. <clears throat> so I have been in the airport in Nigeria where my flight was overbooked, and they said they were make, moving me to a two-hour or the next day flight, and it wasn't like they were going to provide accommodation for me. And I had a visa appointment in the U.S. Uh, embassy in Abuja. Mm. So I was like, I cannot afford to miss this appointment. I've paid money too much. And I was still trying to be polite. My friend had called her mother and said, go to the counter, rake for them. The next day, mommy had gone. They booked mommy and checked in. I was calling my friend that. After the I'm still waiting. You know, she said, mommy has checked in. Better go and rake. Wow. And I went there, and I raked. And mm -hmm. when I raked, I got on that flight. Mm -hmm. So in our, our culture here responds to aggression. Mm. So if I come, you say you're not getting everybody queue up. I say, I know they queue up for a year. Who you be? I go go. They let me go because mm. they cannot handle my yeah. grace. Mm. So the country has created a culture that well, lets everybody go so crazy. So going back to what I said earlier, <laughs> when you enter an, an airport, a foreign air, airline, <clears throat> a, a, a country, you're not sure of the culture. So usually, if you're in Dubai, in Europe, you assume that they will give you compensation for this. You assume that there's some, some kind of outdoorliness. Yeah. So because of that, you will you have the decorum, you comport yourself to the point where you ask questions. Mm. What's going to happen to us? Are we going to be compensated? But if you're in Africa, your mentality automatically think I must make I must no, no, I must no, no, do no, no, that. No. I'm, I'm just telling you the reality. No, no, no. Our, no. our mentality automatically I must conform. I must fight no. for it. I must fight for it. So no, that no. maybe that was the, uh, the the direction they used to get this kind no, of work. Doesn't mean doesn't make it us, right. Yeah. In right. fairness to us Africans, we are not mad people. We go to, we, those of us who travel well, within, we go to the airport, we don't see people screaming. I don't scream. I go there and something is wrong. I expect you to communicate to me. So I always go back to mm -hmm. the counter to ask, okay, what's happening? How long do we have to stay? They'll say, hold on. Your countenance is always very, no, 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 let's no, no, no. Mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Our countenance, we are talking to see, our people. See. And it's then, different. Mm -hmm. The thing is, when I'm communicating to somebody who is giving me a service, mm. you should be receptive. Mm. You should make me feel okay. And that's how I drop my content. A sweet, a sweet word turns away wrath.
that's how I would drop my countenance. Because when I came there, I didn't come to fight. I came to do, travel to and travel. do my business. Let me, let me, let me. So, but Nigerians are not animals. Nigerians no. are not... We think... We, we do well where there is a system. The problem is that we do not have systems here. Yeah, yeah my point. And is. I'm also seeing that, especially in this Lome now, I think yeah. they have, yeah. a, because I've been to Ghana, I've been to Botswana, they yeah. are calm. Yeah. If anything goes wrong, they will communicate to you. They keep communicating to you till you get it. Okay, but, the point I'm making, yeah. I hear you. The point I'm making, look, let's start within. Forget Togo, okay. forget Ghana, forget okay. Botswana. Okay. Inside here, yes. if you want to go to the bus station or the train station, there is a way you automatically assume Anybody be so sorry, the flight is delayed. You already you already put on the yes. you, you wear it immediately. We are Nigerians. Have paid money now. We wear it immediately. Mm. So what is the what do you mean by it's delayed? What time you know you, you don't even call oh sorry, really? When do we when do I expect to get the flight in the, the new the new time? So is our culture here. That's is, is, is that perspective. Let me take this call from it's Dr. Moya. Good morning. Okay, I don't hear him. <laughs> Dr. Moya, are you there? Yeah, compliments of the season. Compliments, madam. Compliments. Go ahead, please. Yes. I think this issue has to do with disrespect for Nigeria. Thank because you. Because this is not the first time this issue is happening. Remember you talked about it when this ambassador, I don't know maybe if you remember, yeah, when remember. this ambassador was being assaulted, I can't remember the country. Yeah, I think but it's, it's, it's not something that we stop anytime soon. Because, mm. and for this issue to get this level, that means there was breakdown of communication along yes. the line. Thank you. Somebody did not understand another text and it degenerated to the level where yeah. the, the, the individual was being assaulted. Right. I don't even want to care what happened. Mm. Nobody deserves that kind of treatment. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 Thank you very much, Dr. Moya. I have, I have, I come to you, Let me have um, the ambassador himself mm -hmm. um, to the Republic of Togo, Mr. Debo Adeshino, is on the phone with us. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Good morning, my dear sister yes. and my colleagues. How are you all? Very, very well. well. Good. We're glad to have you. So you sound, you sound very well. You sound very yes. well. <laughs> so because you are, you are our, you are the ambassador that would uh, to Togo. Give us an insight into what could have happened and transpired at the airport, and what what um what reports have you received from the government of Togo concerning this matter? Well, uh, my dear sister, my brothers, once again, I, I wish you the very best of the season. And I also send my greetings to members of your family. Thank you, thank you. Remember, this happened on Saturday, yes. it's a weekend, and uh, all the government agencies, of course, apart from the aviation uh, sector, you know, was practically uh, on, the, on, on the weekend and shut down. Well, uh, first and foremost, let me say a very big, big thank you to our Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, who has been up and running over this matter. Indeed, I saw the video earlier, but you couldn't really tell where it was. So it was his message to me that then alerted me to the fact that this was happening in Togo. Yes. And I got up immediately, I drove myself to the airport, called some of my officers, and we got there. And of course, it was true that uh, there was an incident there. Yeah. What happened was that uh, a, a number of our people flying from New York were stranded at the airport, and they protested the fact that their flight to the connecting flight to Lagos was now rescheduled or cancelled or whatever it was mm. that they were told. Of course, there's nobody flying so many hours from New York through Ethiopian airlines who would uh, find that uh, rather acceptable. So they protested. Remember, the, the, the regional airline, so to say, has some in Togo. The airline's name is Askai, Askai. Mm. And it's also run by, 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 by Ethiopian airlines. So it's uh, the, the same, the same, the same group. They are in the same group. So they couldn't understand why their their flight to Nigeria would not be disconnected. I mean, would be would be would be cancelled, yeah. so to say. So they protested, and that was what led to the video, to the scene you, everybody saw on the video. But when I go there, interestingly, a week or a few with a few days more on that uh, earlier. Uh, a number of Nigerian diplomats, including former President of Passenger, had gone to the Gambia uh, to monitor the presidential election there. And they also got the same kind of uh, 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 problem with the Aska Airlines, cancellation mm -hmm. of, uh, of flights, postponement. And indeed, seven of the Nigerian ambassadors, retired ambassadors who were part of the Commonwealth Aviation Monitoring Group, were stranded, so to say, mm -hmm. in Togo. They had to wow. leave the following day. One of them, uh, Ambassador Ladan, I remember him very well because he was here with me for two extra days because they said his COVID test was uh, positive and things like that. So it's not a problem that just started, but 
remember, this, uh, these are Nigerians from America going home for Christmas. Yeah. People are waiting for them. We're waiting for them at the airport yeah, so. or whatever. So they were a bit uh, angry, understandably, yeah. understandably. Hmm. Now, I wasn't there, so I wouldn't know there are stories where somebody beat up somebody. somebody so, sir, somebody, somebody was saying us earlier that you could... But sir. remember, this that... Sir, somebody was telling us earlier that in Togo, they don't, that they don't accept protests. Is that correct? They don't... They don't accept protesting. Protesters, protesting is not part of what is acceptable in their community. Is that, is that correct? Well, I do not know about... Uh, generated, but in the airport, in the aviation rules, I happen to know, you know, uh, you know, because of safety, there are, uh, there are fears. If somebody gets violent inside the airport, or inside mm. the aircraft, that should be uh, a major problem for, for, for them and everybody, nobody will accept that. But again, I'm not even saying that people did that. Anyway, they, they sent up on and they were, they were being uh, handcuffed and whatever. Of course, I was watching that as I was dealing with inside the airport. As I was saying, remember, they were in departure because they were in transit. It, it is difficult for you to move from uh, arrival into departure, so I needed all the necessary passes. But I was busy on the line with the minister who was permanently uh, ready, you know, to do whatever I needed or to, to assist with whatever I needed. Luckily for me, in the earlier crisis, I had met the equivalent of Director General of the National Civil Aviation Authority, a, a, a retired colonel, whom I spoke to, and he immediately joined them at the airport arranged and told us highlight that you must lift everybody out of the movement today. Indeed, fantastic gentleman, he used the phrase, not to Nigerians. And I'm saying this on my word of honor. He said, no, 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 this cannot happen to Nigerians. And he made all the arrangements, and almost everybody was there, including those who were initially shackled. All of these were going behind uh, behind the scene. Uh, if I say my right. name, oh, your excellency, I've done this, I've done this, I've done that. Please, please. So, In sir, fact, because I of time, because of time, sir, I have to pause you for a second, sir. We need to know what diplomatic sir. actions will be taken against, against these people that perpetrated this act against okay. Nigerians. Well, well, you, you, you know, you know, as you rightly said, diplomatic steps. If it is diplomatic steps, you don't go on air and start talking about it first mm. because you are, you are looking for a resolution. You are looking for, 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 for a way to, to end a crisis. So you don't go out. So, but so you can be sure that necessary steps are being taken to make sure remedial measures are taken by way of uh, some kinds of apology or whatever. And of course, right. uh, that will be consequent upon a formal request by us to them to ask why did this happen to our people and why did you treat them this way? They will state their own case. And of course, but Togo is a very, very friendly nation. The very, very friendly country. We both founded ECOWAS together before the other countries joined. It was Nigeria and Togo. And since I got here seven months ago, it's been one wonderful experience, brotherhood, friendship, everything. So wow. all of that will come into play in what we're going to do. Of course, we are going to let them know that this should not happen to our people, and it never happens to anybody. Right. Nigeria set so much store of our Africanness says so much stuff of our humanity. No matter how big or how a country is, we treat okay. everybody as a brother, as a sister. Mm. All right. Thank you very much, sir. It's a pleasure having you on the phone to shed light on this. We're going to go on a break now. When we come back, we continue with the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we've heard from the ambassador himself, and um, we'd like to hear your thoughts. Please call us again on 81 270 and also send us messages on YouTube and Facebook. We'll be happy to read your messages. Yes, Nima. So from what the ambassador said, it's obvious that um, the airline elicited the services of airport official to, to curtail our people and their protests. So the airline in this case did us, you know, a the service. They paid the for service. This is their own way. And airlines, all airlines, under their rules, they have their own rules on how they deal with issues of this and ethics and of how they deal with these issues like this. And obviously this had gone wrong. And then they got airport officials to say, these two people want to join the airline by protest and, you know, so hold them down. Stop them. And that's the way to go about it. Rather than have a, a, a handler come to them, apologize for what has been, uh, has been done to them, find a place to get them settled and compensated and treated well with dignity. I saw Nigerians rubbing floor like mop. Because, you know, somebody said yeah. they should be held down. 
I think that, you know, they, yes, the ambassador has spoken, but I think more, more than, you know, this should be done to them. That airline particularly has a, a habit. Um, Jumoke's auntie had called from Lume, one of these African countries. She had taken Ethiopia airline and stopped between a country. And they, they, they said they changed the flight on her. She was stranded in that country. She was made to pay from her pocket mm. for how she got back home. She had to find another flight by herself to come back here. She led the protest with Jumoke then, I think two, three years ago, to the airline to go and, you know, to get compensation and decide with, with Jumoke had to go live on that. A lot of times they do these things and they get away with it. It cannot continue to be, especially when we are in African countries. Don't assume because it's an African, another African country. Like it this. is home. Mm. The woman was alone, traveling alone. She was stranded. Obviously, she was helpless. Yeah. Let me take this call from Abuja. Albert, are you there? Yes. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. <laughs> Good morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, Calling concerning the video of uh, Nigerians being maltreated at the uh, Togo uh, airport. Yes, sir. Mm. Go ahead, sir. Yes. So, watching that video, of course, it's really, really dehumanizing. It's really bad. But I'm calling mm. not to side with any group. But I want it's clear, since it's public now, to send a message now. We should not give coloration to any wrongdoing, any crime, whether it's by the black, the white, the green color, person, or purple, whatever color. What is wrong is wrong. It right. should yes. be universal. What is right is right. It should be universal exactly. like that. Right. <laughs> but wherever you are, you must learn to observe and respect the culture of the environment where you are. Mm -hmm. So ideally, what happens is this. It is no denial. There are bad elements, bad Nigerians, of course, mm -hmm. that send signals, maybe due to their previous experiences in some parts of the world, that will make the whole world think that, okay, so this is how Nigerians are. Right. But that is completely wrong. Yes, you find stupid people in Nigeria. You find stupid people anywhere else in the world. Yeah. You find illiterate in Nigeria, you have illiterate anywhere in the world. Yeah. You have criminals in Nigeria, so, so everywhere. Right. But do not define collectively the whole people because of the nature of a number of people. Watching that, I knew that, okay, what came to my mind is this, this is my personal opinion. The security or the workers at the airport, they didn't start to do this without anything happening. Something must have happened. Something must have signaled such treatment. Either some arrogance or some display or, you know, Whichever way, yes, the practice is unprofessional because if there's any serious problem, the airport workers are supposed to call the security officers who will serve their duty with decorum if it is to arrest, if it is to restrain, whatever, and not to handle people like animals like that. On the other side, Nigerians, we feel like wherever we go, we make it a ground. I mean, the things you cannot do in your own country, but you want to do in other countries, and you want other, con other countries to respect you because of where you are from. Mm. Just be civil, be coordinated. If you notice any worker, any whichever national that is working unprofessionally towards you, simply appeal, take the case up to whatever international organization or to your embassy in the host country or to your government yeah. or to the government authorities of the country where you are. I mean, there's no need to make any... Yeah. Thank you so much, Albert. Thank you very much, Albert, for, for raising that point. Because that's another point. And let's be real, I hear you. A lot of Nigerians who come abroad, who come home from abroad, many of them get into these kind of issues with either security operatives. On, we've seen quite videos in the past where when they are home for the Christmas holidays, they are confronted by the, the, the bike man that hit them, obviously, or the, the police. You know, there's always that initial conflict because you're coming with that from a society where everything works. And you're thinking, like, listen, you guys don't know it better, and, and I know it better. So there's always that perception. I'm just saying a, a different view because mm -hmm. there's always that view of, listen, I'm coming from a society where things are working, and you guys, are not, you, you guys don't understand. You are wrong. You're constantly almost judgmental sometimes on people, either in Africa or even within your own country sometimes. I'm just saying that we also need to come, come home with that decorum. Listen, the same respect 
you give the police living in America that you're coming from is the same decorum they expect also in Nigeria, in Africa, wherever you are. Within the Mariah, everything does not work even in the America. I've been there and I've been treated like I've been treated if I had reacted the way I would have reacted if I was in Nigeria. If I react now. No, 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 no. I just felt I don't even react in Nigeria. I just state what you have done to me, basically. But I think it's within everybody's rights or anybody's right to show a form of displeasure if you're paid for a service and you're not getting it. Nobody can That's take sure. that away from yeah. you. However you want to do it, just apply decorum, the way you are learning to be a civilized human being. But to say you don't show displeasure, I think that is all shades of wrong. You can show displeasure when you're paid for a service and you're not being given that service. Also, I think these other African countries need to stop the stereotyping. They have stereotyped us for a very long time. They just assume everybody who is coming from the shores of Nigeria is either a thief or a criminal. We have intel. In fact, even in their countries, if we check the statistics, we'll see Nigerians who are there who are doing amazing. They should stop that. And I also also would like that they apologize for this misbehavior because this is just not one of those things you call international best practice. They've yeah. just shown us that they can treat us this way and we can decide to boycott them. Mm. So they should come up with an apology yeah. and, you know, show a way that they can do Most. things better going forward. Absolutely. That's what I want to see. I, totally agree with you. I, think, yeah. I, I think that on, um, I need to acknowledge the good work of the, our relationship with Togo to resolve this issue that they were still able to fly, one. Two, I think that Nigerians it. should also please learn to follow legal means. I know that because it might take a long time, but there are compensations for every wrong action if you yeah. would prosecute. Yeah. So rather than us just um, reacting in that moment, follow, they just take it a step back and right. sue the people to court, you get your compensation. All right, that's well, all we can take. We have to run, unfortunately, that's we run out of time. Stay tuned, your view will be right back.